I was born in the mid 90s, so I, if anything, identify as the generation. Why? <laughs> Why? 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 <laughs> Why do you have the places in the middle that we don't know really? Because this is the thing. When people say to, to me, like, oh, but you're a millennial. And I'm like, but I look at the references of millennials and I, I can't really, like, especially because I, I, I if, if he goes by my references, that I'd be a baby boomer in this case all the music that i like Same. all the bands all the movies like i'd be someone that grew up in like the 60s or 70s i mean i feel the same the 70s is definitely my favorite era for both music and both films i think combined it's just to the, be the best to and you, fashion nah to be honest dude mine one is the 20s like you know the that movie uh uh Woody Allen movie uh called Midnight in Paris Midnight in Paris that is literally my dream i would just love to go back to a a place in time in history where they just would was going they were having fun they were having a good old time i wouldn't tell them you're going to have a war many of you will oh, you perish You'd you know up. i come from the future because they'd probably be like a lunatic let's put her somewhere yeah um but i really like that idea which ties in with today's episode because yes. ever since we landed on the stella lansing story yeah. i was kind of we dug ourselves a hole and so i wanted to pair it with something we wanted to pair it with something that was kind of on the same level that discussed the same themes or at least kind of was another scientific or cultural if you will um sort of uh question dominant question mm -hmm. and so we landed on the topic of time travel now before you think that we're gonna just basically uh be dissecting like theories and all of that i don't think that's what really what we're going to be doing we did it we did some research but um we wanted to see some images but also talk about time tra travel in the perspective of photography and why photography is so important and for me i will start by saying something that fueled me into doing this research which is um can photography lie when we look at some of these photos of quote-unquote time travel oh yeah there's a lot of them. right there's a can lot we of... say is it possible that we're looking at something that is that we want to see or are is photography capable of lying yeah. in this sense and for me the conclusion that i started uh, that i reached and this is why i wanted to just kick it off in the beginning of the episode is that i don't think photos can lie what is the basis of the lie that might be in a pot in a photo is the um intentions of the photographer and the viewer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right because a photo is it is what it is unless obviously if you we're not talking about double exposures and other things and etc superimpositions and, and whatever we're just talking about a plain old photo like you know you capture what it is right so if we're being this objective um i think photos um photography cannot lie and the the liar in this case is the photo the photographer or the the viewer that unintentionally yeah I mean, sees looking, things in it you're looking at it through your own experiences and what you what you're used to seeing so if we can give some examples i mean there's been some very famous time travel photos and um, that have probably Talk to I me mean, about it. probably since been debunked i mean there's an example yeah. of the 1962 world cup Brazil's captain, um, Mauro Ramos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I look to you for help. Uh, I hope <laughs> I haven't butchered that. Um, he's raising... We butcher every name. Have you not, <laughs> have you not like learned anything with this podcast I'm going to give you a list of Irish names to read out. <laughs> okay, I will. We'll do it in the end of the episode. Yeah, we'll do it at the end of the episode. Well, it'll and... be a bonus. But anyway, he's uh, you know raising the trophy when they won in Chile. Um, and it looks, if you look at that photo, we'll probably put a link to it. Mm. Um, it looks like there's an eager fan, you know, with a camera in his face, as you see so much nowadays, taking a photo. 
Nah, I disagree. Yeah, well, that's what it looks like. But the more you look at it, it's because we're used to seeing a hand in that position. But like, if you literally look at the photo, it looks like he's photographing with the the medium format TLR. Yeah. And if you go and look like cameras in the, say, just do a basic a camera research. box for the uninitiated. Yeah, but if you look, uh, just basically go on on um, Google and just go like you know camera fo- photographic cameras 1950s mm-hmm. 1960s around that time. I guarantee you there'll be at least one photo of a TLR of a TLR and you'll be like oh maybe it is what is and also in comparison with the other photo I think that photo is that's why I looked at it but I didn't even delved into it didn't even read about it because I thought like come on like seriously I mean none of them really there's another example um of a film made in 1948 it has a star Shirley Temple She's a bit more grown up there. Uh, mm. It's called Fort Apache. And um, they're in a horse-drawn carriage in this I've I've scene. seen that one, actually. Yeah. Watched that one. And uh, one of the characters, it looks like because of the dialogue that's happening at the time, it looks like, you know, he's looking for direction somewhere. And the way he's holding, which, let's face it, is probably a, an old school notepad. But it does look like he's trying to figure out on Google Maps where the hell he's going. <laughs> and like, it's just, it's... I think it's safe to say that we have plenty of examples where people, just because they see you doing um, something more like hunching over, kind of looking at something small in your hands or holding something potentially very small in your hands, they think you're on your phone. Or if you're like, you know, just scratching your ear or doing something next to your ear, they just automatically think that you're talking on the phone like to somebody like you can't there's no other action that people can do yeah right that involves that doesn't involve a phone in this case that you know touching your ear or kind of looking kind of hunched over looking at your hands or something in your hands i'm trying to think of other things that i'd be doing that would make my hand i'll tell you i'll tell you many things that you can like you can look at a paper in your hand a small tiny note like that someone gave you you can be looking at your wrist wrist watch can you know when you take your watch off and you kind of adjust time and stuff there you go like when i was reading through these photos or what people why people thought they were tra- time travel photos i'm like come on and also this is my question okay All right do you think that if i'm if i'm in the 1940s and i see someone right with this gadget mm-hmm. of a, a foreign gadget of the future i'd be like i wonder what that is i'll be like hey sir I'd be and freaked then out. We'd be probably asking, hey, what is that? Well, can I see it? What is-? like people wouldn't know. And then you'd come home, you'd tell your wife, you'd tell your husband, you'd tell whatever, I've seen this guy on the subway, whatever. They with this it would spread like wildfire. Why is why do people think that uh well that people therefore in the situation or or in the crowds that are surrounding this person in cases of some some people that we'll see like they they can't see it like everybody's ignoring the fact that this guy has a potential phone in his there's exactly. a couple of photos where it's like a soldiers during world war ii it looks like they're holding a phone if that was me walking along as a civilian i'd be like oh my god that's some like, weird device that's well, for killing people what i think is like back in the day right if i pointed at the sky and i said i've seen an alien i'd be probably making it into the local news either as a crazy lady but also as like the person that potentially has seen aliens so like how is it that someone's traveling with a potential gadget of the future and nobody notices nobody says anything it's not in any newspaper it just gives you a lot to think as well like yeah people it's, are a, it's an assumption it. it's like it's an, an ar- arrogance that people from you know times gone that past, we now are more that intelligent we're smarter yeah and that they're stupid because they don't have the same technology that we have and i'd actually argue the opposite i like, think we're getting dumber and dumber like for instance i i agree and and for instance like there's another example i wanted to point which is um someone um and this clip is online all over the well there was all over the internet now i think he's a bit more harder to find it but a few years ago it was all over because he was quoted as an example of time travel it was part of a special edition um of um T- modern times by uh charlie chaplin um, and basically on that dvd there was like extras and there was kind of footage of people going and seeing the premiere of the movie and in one of those like clips somebody kind of was watching it and they thought that this woman who was kind of on like she was sort of like walking around and she had her hand to her ear uh, which seems to me that she's adjusting like a sort of earlier 
form of earring aid yeah and or a pin in her hair or yeah something. or a pin or something and they go like oh that's time traveling or that's potential time traveling proof but like don't you think that the person who filmed it that reviewed the footage that also put that footage um uh, stored that footage that then selected that footage to be on the extras of the dvd nobody's seen it mm yeah and i know what it's there's like a, a certain like arrogance to all these assumptions 100%. that's what i think i just don't get it where are like, the cell phone towers like what she yeah exactly even if i'm going back to say the 1940s how and is I'm she going, communicating yeah to i'm trying to ring whoever, say, whoever. Ta- oh my god i'm back in the 1940s should i warn everyone about all the- i mean maybe i'm coming off as too kind of uh conservative and i know that i probably am but it's just like it is kind of even when you zoom in and stuff it's just very like i know that i understand the fascination with time travel i would love for it to be possible i know of people that when i'm when i was researching the, that basically built machines and stuff like that that's really super cool i know god love them but i know i know i'd be one of them in the future i'll be I, like i know but they wasted so much time like <laughs> they're wasting time trying to find a non-linear so time technically again they are traveling like they're going really far into the future haven't achieved nothing so yeah. that whole year but, or two they spent building it may as well have not happened i know but an interesting thing that i found out and i wanted your thoughts on this um and i think it's a very interesting discussion is that when i was researching some of these time travel uh theories and some of these photos and etc um, i came across a lot of theories that said that time travel is possible because time is not linear yes um what's your thoughts on that i mean i definitely look i'm no way into a lot of, i'm not a scientist in any mm. way um i do think there is something to that i definitely think we're at a stage where we haven't discovered everything there is to know oh, yeah, about absolutely. how time works and that's another side of arrogance that to think that we do is ridiculous um it definitely feels possible the whole concept of deja vu i mean if you ever been sitting there and go i feel like i've done this before or i have a dream of this exact scenario um and that even like you know yourself when time feels like it's going by really slowly yeah. um usually when you're doing something really boring or for me it's if i'm exercising or something like that but if you're having a nice time out with friends it seems like it's going really quickly there is something that doesn't feel like everything is going at a step by step rate okay i think it is possible um i don't know a huge amount like i haven't gone into details of the science i know kind of the basic Mm. that that we all do but i read something very interesting which was like um to kind of maybe justify these photos mm-hmm. right and the existence of time travel and photography potentially capturing it is that we should think of time uh, when we th- when you say time is non-linear it's more like thinking of time as sort of like a pool of water yeah. where that water is like in constant kind of movement and basically there's just no linear kind of uh temporal sort of cr- i'd say line for better for I lack of a better like word. a film strip a strip of film basically w- w- what it's what it's trying to say is that um events that are uh s- strongly connected due to causation which mm-hmm. is uh cause consequence mm-hmm. they'll create uh ideas of deja vu they'll create ideas of like try like Basically, they'll manifest themselves into the present, mm-hmm. regardless if they're from the past or a future that you haven't or that you didn't li- live yet because it's a parallel universe. Mm-hmm. This is way too deep now, rabbit hole. Or if it's in the future that you will potentially live yeah. or that your parallel you will live. So it's kind of very complicated to explain. But then there's others that say like, you know, that there are certain events that because of their nature being so similar, like wars and stuff like that, or mm-hmm. or a similar degree of violence, similar degree of love in your life, that there's a direct sort of uh, connection between them. And wow. that if you uh, look deep enough and I don't, I didn't go as deep as to find out how. But if you go deeper into it, you can actually access that. There's people that actually believe that you can access that and you can travel in time. Not just the old, the general fashion way of you stepping in the machine and going, but actually just in your head. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. Uh, mm. There is another example, actually, just go a on, bit more on. of a scientific example that I came across. Mm-hmm. Um, You know, famous uh, physicist. You may have heard of him, Albert Einstein. Mm-hmm. You know, that random guy. Yeah. Um, And his theory of relativity. um, And 
in, in that theory, time is an illusion um, and it moves relative to the observer. So um, an observer of time that's traveling near the speed of light will experience time and its after effects like aging, etc., much more slowly than an observer at rest. Um, that's why astronaut Scott Kelly aged ever so slightly less over the course of a year in space than his twin brother who had stayed on Earth. Interesting. It is interesting. But I mean, how how do you prove that as well? Like, how do you prove someone's age less? I guess, you know, if you... I think actually when I was writing, writing the show notes for this episode, mm-hmm. I came up with an interesting example, which is if you removed all uh, examples of uh, all manner, manners of counting time, say yeah. clocks, watches, phones, phones calendars how would you know like how would you measure time how would you know how much time have gone past and i think obviously one very obvious answer would be the succession of days and nights Mm -hmm. but then again how do you actually know that you age and how would you know your own age because even if you were able to count the succession of days and nights it is proven that in in certain circumstances the human being can actually lose count like say if you're exposed to um, a certain amount of light or more hours of light than usual you actually lose track of time because there's um, interesting experiments that have been done um, with people around that and they completely lose their notion of time but anyways how else would you uh, capture time or try to uh, capture your aging I'd how, say how bad your hangovers are. You could probably have a wild guess that you're no longer in your twenties anyway. <laughs> oh, that's very good. That's very good. I think photography would be a good because imagine like it's like those examples that we see on social media all the time of like um people that have been taking a photo of their kid for like a mm-hmm. whole year. Yeah. And you can see the aging. Yeah. Or they take pictures of themselves mm-hmm. for however many long yeah i am someone who has done a lot of self-portraits and even though sometimes my face is not (laughs) i know very vain but i know that even sometimes if my face is not at the forefront uh, sometimes hidden by the camera or whatever reflection but i still can see my aging i think in this respect photography comes as one of the true methods in my eyes of capturing time yeah it is, i mean it is capturing a lot more um and i'm just thinking as you were speaking there there's that famous photograph uh taken during the great depression of the lady with her two kids i can't remember her name oh the migrant mother yeah, yeah that's yeah. it and the photo she's about i looked it up she's about 33 or 34 yeah. in that photo I'm going to be 36 this year. Now, if I put those side by side, it's like, which one's lying? Because they're the same age. But it's like, no, there's environmental factors. And that's why I suppose photography is good. It's not just, it's traveling through time, but and it's capturing just with that one photo, the environment as well. Even though you can only see her and the two kids, but the way she looks, the worry on her face, the fact that, I mean, I feel like she looks, compared to today's generation, a lot older than 33, 34. Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah, but I, I feel like that's, you know another element you know you're not just capturing the aging process but you're capturing the environment in which that aging process is happening whereas that wouldn't be the same not in the western world anyway it wouldn't be the same today in 2024 i think it's very well put thank you because i was worried i was going off there (laughs) no i think this is why the the beauty of making discussions like this yeah is that we can um at the same time that we're talking about photography also show people hopefully and and people are whether you're tuning in listening or watching or etc you can see how photography is so important that it in a manner that it connects with so many things sorry for interrupting the episode here guys and gals i just wanted to quickly mention mpb mpb is not only the sponsor of this podcast but also um, one of the largest online platforms where you can buy, sell, or trade your used photography or videography equipment. Now, there's two sides to this coin. One is that you're probably initiating a new project or you're you know, looking to get something fresh into your workflow and you're looking for something new. So if that is the case, 
check out the catalog that MPB has available on mpb.com and you'll quickly realize that they have everything from tripods to cameras, lenses, filters, gimbals, whatever it is, um, even audio and studio equipment. So definitely check it out. But also on the inverse side of the coin, if you're looking to sell something because you're literally got so much gear that you haven't used or you want to repurpose it for some reason, then definitely check out mpb.com if you're looking to sell something and you don't want to deal with the hassle of it, the fees and tons of people. And honestly, the process is very, very simple. All you have to do is you go onto their website and you basically pop in the details of whatever you're selling and you'll receive a quote um, fairly quickly. And after that, you'll book the collection if you're interested and everything is done really, really fast and quickly. I myself have used MPB both buying and selling. So I'm speaking from a personal experience. So whatever it is that you're trying to do in these coming months, you know, capturing aliens or perhaps ghosts or, you know, time traveling, like some of the folks that we've been talking about on this podcast, definitely check out mpb.com because you'll have a piece of equipment that you most likely need for that. But in saying that, yeah, time travel, I mean, look, as I said, you're looking at a photo anyway. Sometimes when it's so good, you're kind of um, immersed in it. Like mm, I have yeah. my book with all the Time Magazine, the best of Time Magazine photographs. Um, and when something is taken, pretty much, you know, the street photography or it's taking off the cuff, it does kind of bring you back if it's a really good photograph. Mm -hmm. um, but proof, I don't think we've we've seen proof yet. There is, you know, one famous story that went around the, the interweb um, Ooh, a few years ago. It. Yeah, now I, I do have is to it, say... Is this one of Sadie's weird facts? It is a weird fact, <laughs> but, um, you know, I think... Um, I do have a couple of uh, Ukrainian friends, so please, please, I hope I don't butcher this so so badly. But um, in 2006, a man called Sergei uh, Ponomarenko, um, in 2006, uh, so this... Ukrainian time traveler. This is his story. Now, apparently, um, he was wandering around the streets of Kiev and he looked very confused. He was dressed in clothes from the 50s. He didn't know where he was. Um, and obviously, authorities came to question this guy. Uh, he said he was from 1958. And on him, supposedly, he and had... was this recently? Uh, this was in 2006. So, relatively recent. Um, years ago, and he had an nearly. ID. Uh, stemming from that time with a photo he had an old camera um that of whoop, excuse me uh he had an old camera uh that you know had ceased to be made it was you know an antique but it was in near perfect condition um so it wasn't like it had just been sitting in someone's attic for for 50 yeah, but years those are relatively easy to find as well. oh yeah well um but when they printed the the photographs um on the photographs they found pictures of kiev from that time period in 1958 and they also found pictures of this gentleman and his girlfriend mm. so um you know they they found this really weird but obviously this guy is freaking out so they took him to um, a, a mental health facility uh, to speak with doctors and he was you know kept in a room that was locked off from everyone you know there were bars on the windows and then um one day he just vanished and the question is, how did he vanish from this place? Now, he had said uh, one of the photos on this on the film was of a sort of um, kind of triangle shaped UFO object. Um, and that's what he said had taken him. And that's why he was somehow now in 19 um, or 2006. So then he when he vanished then from this mental health facility, no one knows how he got out because, you know, Maybe those places are kind of i mean these places are locked up they've they'd no cctv of him leaving but they had cctv of him entering um and then eventually they had to figure out what had happened and they did their research found someone of the same name who had disappeared that year 1958 but then had shown up a few days later back in 1958 they found his girlfriend that was in the photos what the hell? um and she had said uh that he again disappeared in the 1970s but they found her in the present yeah they found her uh, so she was on. older kind of yeah she was older gotcha. um now again this is just you know you find different bits of information on the internet so we're not sure exactly how this happened but she said uh, that he had disappeared in the 1970s mm. um, but had sent her a photo from the year 2050 there is a uh, kiev in the background but it, obviously the skyline had changed dramatically and there he was standing there saying i'll be home soon he never returned so 
these are examples. Now, it does have to be said that this came from a TV show called Aliens in in, in Ukraine. Um, and, you know, there isn't hard, like, facts. So I think the problem is a lot of the um, images that were created for the reconstruction of this story kind of took on a life of their own and ended up online as the actual time travel images. I wanted to tie yeah. in with an actual, actual example of possible time traveling photography not in the way you're thinking of someone stepping in a machine and they're going on and taking their photos and coming yeah, back Dr. no Who. but in a very actual smart way that we see these days but i think the genesis of it is this guy it's lovely and this actually it's, it kind it's of a, makes it sort of kind of talks it's a feel good things. story it is a feel good story so there's a young man from ontario canada uh, by the name of taylor jones um, and his early website is titled Dear Photograph. The idea came to him one day and um, he was going through old family albums, reminiscing as you do. Um, and he uh, queried himself, what would happen if I went to the place where this lovely old photo was taken? Yeah, exactly. It's like basically going to back to the location where he took mm -hmm. the photo. He'd basically hold the photo in front of his camera, mm -hmm. try to kind of make it uh, fit the edges of the photo in the actual whatever it was mm -hmm. the scenery that he was he was capturing and then he would take a photo and i think this is very interesting and he calls this an example of time traveling photography yeah and it's so sweet i don't know why but like the thought of it i mean you see examples of like you know maybe it's a place where um you know a couple are standing and then yeah. like 50 years later i just think for some yeah. reason that really tugs on my heartstrings and it, it is time travel it is time traveling in a way because you're joining two different realities and i think it's very interesting because he said that you know in an interview or i think it was an interview or an article i can't remember but he said that this is an interesting idea to um create new photographs um in the sense that we allow uh time and space a different sort of um, um idea we create a different idea of time and space um and also uh we question as humans about what makes us so attached or so um connected to a certain moment in time mm -hmm. and i think this is super important and uh, this website just to give you a little bit of a kind of a background he went he made this website i think it was about the early 2010s mm -hmm. 2011 something like that yeah and then um basically he was open to receiving submissions from people and lo and behold he, he received over the years thousands and thousands of submissions mm -hmm. people were really excited about this idea and he has made a book i have actually bought his book it was meant to arrive yesterday but it didn't so i'll probably um afterwards of filming this um i will probably for the you know viewers of the podcast will shoot some uh, kind of you know b-roll of the book and include in it because i think it's very very interesting and some yeah. of the photos and, and 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 in the book as well there's kind of little descriptions of the people that sent the photos because the the book i believe is made of his photos but also of other submissions yeah um and i think it's this is super important and it is in a way time traveling in photography do you have any strange facts just to close off or your i mean other, I, any other because i think you've i you've think given i've delivered on the the strange facts and but yeah this close it off for me uh and uh i'll be saying my goodbyes uh unless if you have anything to say sadie just keep it real no that's not keep what i wanted it, to say keep it weird keep isn't it, it weird your, keep it weird is your or outro keep it weird uh, let us know what you think about time travel and if there's any proof we'd actually love to hear it uh, yeah and also stories. other epi other maybe examples in photography that you found of quote-unquote potential time traveling yeah and yeah i think that's all for today so take care stay safe keep shooting keep creating keep doing what you're doing and we're out keep it weird Mm-hmm.